Well, hello and welcome along to Track Talk uh, Under Lights for Friday the 28th of uh, February. Uh, plenty to look forward to on the card, a nine race program coming up here at Cranji. But before we get to any race preview, I'd like to welcome in my next guest uh, on the show. It is uh, Singapore Turf Club uh, jockey and apprentice coach Matt Pumper. Matt, great to have you here in the studio. And uh, how's things? All going well? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me on, Nick. Um, you know, things are good. We've got some exciting news for for everyone um, today, which is I'm sure we'll, we'll touch on mm. in a minute, but yeah, it's great to be here. It certainly is great to, to have Matt here, and uh, as he says, the uh, the news in question uh, is that uh, one of our apprentices, uh, Shafrizel, as we know him, who who works for Michael Clements, he's he's heading off to Australia. So um, a big uh, a big moment in his career coming up, Matt. Yeah, it is. It's great exposure for for him and also the the Singapore Turf Club. So we're, we've been invited to it's called the NAS um, series, which is a national apprentice race series and what it involves is that um, each state of Australia uh, has a turn of ho hosting a race um, and, and it's a point point system and at the end of the end of the month series that um, whoever gets the most points comes home the winner and bragging rights obviously and, and a big trophy yeah. so it's um, it's great for everyone involved. Indeed, we uh, we saw his profile there. Obviously, a man who's uh, who's done quite well here in recent years. Here's his most recent winner, Matt. This is Passport to Rome, um, yellow and cerise striped jacket. Good ride this day from uh, from Schaffrizel. Yeah, it was um, actually during the race. I thought he was going to do a bit too much work, but once he got to the to the front, he, he backed it off and rated it well, and um, it it, it uh, won really well. Mm -hmm. And he rode it again. It's um, next start and it, ran, and it ran second so it's one I hope he can stick with. Yeah hopefully indeed he's gone to the front. I mean, this night the tactics were to go forward and, and he's and, I mean you obviously work closely with the apprentices I mean different styles of running different instructions can obviously you know play their part into winning or losing a race but it's not an easy task trying to make all the running would that be fair? That, that's correct and especially when you draw a bad barrier and it all depends on on, on the tempo mm. you know if you have to do too much work to get there you your horse is not going to finish off, yeah. so the, the idea is to get there as easy as you can, get the, get the best possible run, and then give your horse every opportunity to, to finish off the race, which is what he's done here. He's looked good there, Matt, as well. Just uh, Before they got to the 200, he's turned the whip over, he's given him a few taps behind the saddle, and he's kept him nice and balanced, kept him going, and, and that looks a good ride. Yeah, it is. It's a very good ride, and it's something we've been working on knowing that we're going to Australia with the whip rule and yeah. things like that. Which How much does that differ from here? Does it differ much, the whip rules? Well, the, there's Australia, no, there's not really a rule here, but sure. at home in Australia, it's five strikes before the 100 and it can't right. be consecutive. Okay. And after the 100, it's if you're in contention, mm -hmm. you can you can hit, um, hit them as much as you like, but it just it takes a bit of uh, adjusting too mm. if you've never had to abide by that rule. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's have a look uh, and see where Shafrizel's going because it's a really um, packed month, as you can see. Here is um, what he will be up to and where he'll be heading to, Matt. So he's not going to have any, well, he'll have a little bit of free time, but he's going to be a busy boy. That's a, a pretty intense schedule starting at Hobart. Yeah, we, we leave on... Um on Monday evening, and we arrive in in Hobart on Tuesday. We ride Wednesday, but we'll be based in South Australia right. with Richard Jolly, so that's going to be his home base for for the month. So in between series, he'll fly back and and have a have a boss there, and hopefully sure. get some outside rides. So every week we'll be he'll be travelling, mm. um, but in in the in between, hopefully we get some some more rides as well. Yeah, indeed. Now, well, you and I were actually talking this morning down at the, uh, the barriers uh, for the trials. Obviously, any opportunity to, to go abroad and, uh, and do that sort of thing obviously must be taken with both hands. I mean, when, when, Carsten, you're marrying back to when you were an apprentice and a, and a young jockey. Were there, was there opportunity like this? I mean, I know Australia's a little bit different. You've got more states, you've got more racing. But, uh, I mean, when this opportunity comes about, this is something that a young man must always jump at, I would, I, I'm sure. A hundred percent. This series was was around when when I was apprentice, and I actually was lucky enough to to ride in the WA leg. Um, so it, it's been around a long time, but it's not not everyone gets sure. the opportunity to go. So you're selected, and um, so when you do get selected, it's a you know it's a great opportunity and an, and an honour to represent your your state. It certainly is, and obviously we we wish him very well. Uh, for sure, and we'll be we'll be obviously following that progress on this show. Also, you told me that you were going to go down, I think, for a couple of legs, or, or maybe the last one as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll fly with him to Tasmania and then across to Adelaide to get him settled in. Sure. Um, spend the weekend with him, go to track work, um, then I'll come back and maybe spend the second last and last leg with him. Just depends on how he's 
settled in. And if you were to give him one piece of advice about Australian Rangers, which I'm sure you have, you probably give him more mm. than one piece, what would be the, the most crucial thing? What, what would you say to him and say, look, when you go to Australia, these are do's and don'ts. Is there anything in particular that you, you think he, should, he obviously needs to be aware of? Uh, it's def definitely the whip rule. Mm. Um, obviously, and then also I think the tempo is a bit slower in, yeah. in Australia, so you've got to be mindful of that. Um, and, uh, and when we go to Queensland to ride, they go the opposite direction. So right, okay. he's never been that way before. Yeah. So that that's going to be something new for him as well. For sure, yeah, indeed. We, we look forward to tracking his progress, uh, uh, indeed. Um, a couple of other apprentices that, that we've picked out, you, we're going to have a look at. Uh, a couple of really nice rides. Obviously, you worked so closely with the whole pool of apprentices. It was the first feature race of the year. I mean, young Krisner to absolutely you know, run away with the New Year Cup. That was pretty special for him. And we've got it here now. Um, again, front running ride, never headed, won it, won it nicely. Yeah, I, I was... Um, Pretty happy with this ride, you know. Krisner's uh, someone I work I work closely with all of them, but um, he he seems to put his horses in very good positions. Yeah. Um, he's very much a confident person. When he rides with confidence, he you know he doesn't do much wrong. So um, for for him to do this on uh, the first meeting of the of the season was was fantastic. He um, happened to get a little suspension there, which slowed him up a little bit. So yeah. hopefully he can get the the ball rolling again. Yeah, he's, he always strikes me, Matt, as a very unassuming young man, Chris. Now, I, I enjoy chatting to him because I, I feel that there's a lot more he could give, and he's an yeah. interesting he's an interesting interviewee, I think. Yeah, and he, and he's different when you get him, um, you know, behind closed I've doors with his mates. Yeah, he has. He's <laughs> you know he's uh, he's a larrikin, but yeah. you, you don't think he is. But um, when he's with his mates, he is, which is you know it's good it's good to have that in you. Yeah, and with working with with Chris, now, what has been the the main sort of point that you've been working with him on? I mean, he, again, a bit like Sir Frizel, very tidy rider, uses the whip well. Is that something that you're seeing him progress with now? Yeah, definitely. And we, we sort of work closely. We do our work on Wednesdays at Apprentice School and um, Thursdays I'll have a chat to him and speak about his ride. So when it comes race night, we don't have to worry about mm. too much. Um, mm. Just feel him full of confidence. And if you do that and he, and he believes in himself, he usually he usually gets it right. Yeah, for sure. And for those that obviously don't know a great, too much about your role, um, yeah. obviously I'm privileged enough to, to know a bit about it, is that obviously on race night, you're always there when they return to the scale. You're, you're there and you'll, you'll go through replays with them, even yeah. on the race night itself. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get there probably an hour before the first and go and see everyone who's in the first and discuss their rides, um, how we think things will sort of yeah. pan out. and. Obviously, we don't give them instructions, and the trainer does that. But there's, you know, different scenarios, and um, and then so once again um, go through their rides, and then I meet them as soon as they come back to go through them um, about their rides. So that's it works quite well. Yeah, I imagine it's quite a, a fulfilling and pleasing role for sure. Very much a, a mentor, almost like a big brother, I suppose, in yeah. some regards to <laughs> some of them, given that they are quite old. Some of yeah. our apprentices, in in a sense. And um, one other rider that we want to uh, to have a little. Uh, look upon is, is Rosman Iskander. Um, he won on my Dreamliner recently. This was actually a little, uh, well, a minor cup race, which was quite nice. Um, and this is a very good horse, Matt, and, and this was a, a good ride, and a horse that he knows very well. Yeah, it, it's a very nice horse, and I think um, it's not the first win he's had on it. Um, no, he's ridden him two or three times, I think. Yeah, from he's sort of always had, um, you know, he's played with a bit of injury, um, Iskander, so... That horror fall, didn't he, yeah, last year? but before that I think he had another accident and, and did something to his arm, so when I first turned up he was just coming back from injury mm. and um, he had a few suspensions and I felt before he had his injury, I think he broke his leg, he was sort of just starting to get yeah. a bit of momentum, so uh, hopefully this win here gives him a kick along as well. And Again, very streamlined young rider, Matt. You seem to have them in this nice mould and, and getting them to, to get horses rolling. But what he's got in his favour is his weight. I mean, he's, I think he's ridden 46 here, which is just ridiculous, in yeah. word. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that um, for a long time, no. that weight. But um, if you can do it, that's great. You get yeah. a lot Especially of... Especially um, here, right? Like yeah. When they're that light. Correct. In, in some of the big races, you get a... There's a lot of lightweights and mm. you know, it presents someone like Iskander with a lot of opportunities. It certainly does, uh, for sure. Regrettably, we're, we're running out of a little bit of time. But just finally, just to, to obviously touch upon your role here, you're, you're obviously still enjoying things. We see you down at the barriers, we see you on race day. and um, You really have an affinity with it, this group of lads and, and you, must enjoy, you must really enjoy working with them. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I wouldn't be here if I, if yeah. I didn't. It, it hasn't been quite 12 months yet, but I seem to have fitted in quite well. And it's, you know, you're not just a, a coach, you're someone to yeah. sort of talk to and lean on if they're having hard times. And 
you know, I'd sort of get them to do their one and two percenters right every time yeah. and fill them with confidence and sort of when, when the chances arise with the opportunities, they can sort of execute it the way we've been practicing. Yeah, indeed. Um, just finally, we can't talk about apprentices on this show without mentioning a good friend to both of us, Damien Kinnamott, whose son Bailey was inducted into the Racing Victoria Apprentice School just today as we record this show. Yeah, that's a, that's a big thrill for, for Bailey and mm. also Damien. I'm sure he'd be very proud. I think so, um, yeah. I've been on the phone to him already and he, he was um, very excited and you know, it's good that he could get down there and, and see that happen because it's a big thing in, in someone's career when sure. they just start off like that and I'm sure he's very proud. Yeah, indeed, Matt. Uh, we uh, have sadly run out of time to, to chat, but we could chat for a lot longer, I'm sure. But we'll catch up with you on race day. And, and many thanks for coming up. Thanks for having me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Matt, uh, Matt Pumper, then our guest on Track Talk uh, under lights and uh, Shafrizal. We wish him very well uh, when he heads down to Australia. Let's take a look at some of the details now for this meeting, the, uh, the premierships uh, to start. Let's have a look at the premierships for you. Uh, Mark Walker on top with 16. Uh, Vlad with the 18 for the jockeys and Simon Cock. Uh, with 14 winners. Uh, Matt, will he be champion apprentice again? Well, it's, hard, it's hard to say he won't be, yeah. but uh, there's a few there with you know three and four kilo claims, mm -hmm. which uh, I'm sure that, that'll take him a long way as well. It certainly will. Uh, well worth uh, having that claim uh, indeed. Let's have a look at uh, the details for this fixture. We've, we're on the long course B uh, for this one. We've got uh, some uh, six races uh, on the turf, three races uh, on the poly track uh, coming up, nine races uh, on Friday evening, as you can see there, at 6.20 we start for the first of uh, nine. So mainly on the turf, but three poly races to go with it as well. Don't go anywhere. Do join us after the break, uh, and we'll be previewing the first of nine races here on Track Talk Under Lights.